Jimmy, I don't know even know where to start with this. This is so uh, George Jetson. Uh, this this is uh, an amazing looking vehicle. What is the story behind this? This is uh, called the Astronome. Uh, in 1955, uh, the latter part of 1955, the uh, American Motors Company knew that they were going to attend the 1956 International Auto Show in New York. And uh, they wanted to have a car there that would blow everybody away. Uh, they decided to uh, produce a very far out looking car, uh, gave the, the project to the styling department. The styling department turned it down and said, we better go to an outside source for this. We don't think that far ahead to, to do things uh, in a very futuristic style. So uh, a, a, an independent uh, design engineer by the name of Richard R. Bibb was chosen who had worked for American Motors before as well as Packard and General Motors. Uh, he came up with the initial designs of the car, uh, got the go-ahead from the factory to produce it. Uh, they in turn sent him a Metropolitan and uh, R. Bibb's company then subcontracted to have this car manufactured for the show. Uh, it took them about six months, and uh, they finished just in time uh, to get it into the show. Uh, it was featured on the cover of Newsweek in April of 1956. Uh, it was also used in a number of the uh, American Motors, Hudson and Nash, and, and uh, Metropolitan uh, showrooms for uh, the draw for the, for the public. It is a driving car. Uh, it will function as a metropolitan engine inside as well as the driving train. There uh, was a special clock built for the car by the Hamilton Watch Company. It's a celestial clock uh, with the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper and uh, a number of other uh, of the constellations in the face of the clock so that the clock goes counterclockwise, the face of it, whereas the hands go clockwise. Uh, the name of the car was originally going to be called the Metro Nome, G-N-O-M-E, and uh, the International Harvester Company uh, in New York at that time was producing a Metro truck, and their legal department contacted American Motors and said, we own the rights to the name Metro, you cannot use it. So uh, Arbib went through a long checklist of other names to use, and they finally decided on the name Astronome. Uh, so the Metropolitan name was essentially wiped away from the car, even though it was a Metropolitan, and supposed to be the Metropolitan uh, of the future, in probably the turn of the century, when most of these bubble top cars were supposed to be uh, actually being sold to the public. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be driving them now. Right. Yeah. Somehow that didn't happen. No, it was supposed to be, we were supposed to have mag magnetic stripes on the road and uh, be able to drive into that point and set our cars up and say point and the car would go there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's never come about. In the meantime, there were a number of manufacturers back in the 50s who were building bubble top cars, not as far out as this one. Ford had one and, and uh, the Chrysler was, uh, was another one that had one. And... Uh, uh, none of them got quite as, as far out as this car. Yeah, the Fords later became the Batmobile, so. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. The and bubble top on this, can you uh, show us how it operates? Yes, it operates from inside the car as well as outside. So you'd climb in the car and then reach inside and throw there's, the switch and it would another, come back down. Yeah, there's another joystick in the car. You pull that and it will come back down again. It comes down much quicker than it goes up. You'll notice the, uh, the similarity in, in how uh, automotive designers borrow from one another in that uh, the front end of this is very reminiscent uh, of a 63 Buick Riviera. And the rear end is very much like, I believe, 61 CAD tail fins. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting to see how, how designers will borrow from one another over the period of years. Have you driven this down the street? Yes. What kind of reaction do you get? <laughs> uh, quite fantastic. Wow. The, the, the kids that are walking can't believe what they see. 
and uh, and adult, everybody points. Mm -hmm. But it's it's much the same as you get when you drive a normal Metropolitan too. You get a lot of that reaction from people that again with thumbs up and and uh, they'll come up to you and talk and say, "Isn't that uh, a, a cute car?" And my aunt had one, or I wish I had one. Well, the thumbs up you would get with this, I think, would be followed by somebody walking into a telephone pole because they were so shocked <laughs> at what they were seeing. Yeah, it's uh, it, it was it, it was quite a design and uh, and uh, quite unique. Looks very much uh, like a Jetsons car. I've heard lots of rumors that it was used in in different space movies. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't, but it did get a lot of publicity back in the fifties, and that that it was used for a lot of of, uh, as I said, dealer showroom uh, promotions as well as, as uh, promotions for Alcoa aluminum because the whole body is aluminum. So uh, Alcoa used it for uh, quite extensively and uh, uh, Arbib had designed some special luggage that would fit in here too. And uh, the luggage manufacturers were, uh, uh, were also using this to promote their luggage. And, uh, well, if the viewers want to see this car and all the other wonderful cars that you have here, where is your museum located and when is it open? We're in North Hollywood, California. We're open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. To, to 6 p.m. And we, at the present time, uh, have the museum open uh, by appointment. Uh, we plan on opening it in the near future just to be a, a walk-in, but at the present time we do it on appointment. Uh, we have the parts department here also, and that is open the same time However, the parts department being separate, uh, that's open, of course, Monday through Friday from 10 to 6, mm -hmm. as well as our shop. Uh -huh. Well, if the viewers look at the screen right now, you can see some more specifics on where you can see this at and when you can see it. Jimmy, thank you very much for taking the time to be on the show today. You're very welcome. It's been my, my privilege. Well, thank and, you. Uh, and why don't you go ahead and we'll close out this segment while you close down the top. All right.